Okay, our next uh, speaker in this session will be Andrew Byrne. And Andrew is going to talk about where and when are badgers bovine tuberculosis positive. Thanks, Andrew. Thank, thanks, Dean. Um, yeah, good, good morning, ladies and gentlemen. And um, what's been great is that there's been a lot of talk about badgers already, so I can I can swiftly move on some of the background here. Um, so this is some work that I did while I was in um, University College Dublin. Um, I'm now in Athby in Stormont. So just to introduce the species very quickly. So it's this little black and white guy, the European badger, Melis Melis. It's got a very wide distribution right across Western Europe, as you can see there. And in, uh, in Britain and Ireland, they're particularly widespread and abundant. So on this, on this um, map here, you can see that the darker colours is where you have a higher probability of finding the species. So they're basically found everywhere where there's appropriate habitat, which is most of um, the Republic of Ireland. We, are, we know from numerous talks today that um, the, the badger is a, a wildlife reservoir of M. bovis, and we have some evidence to suggest that the spillback infection back to cattle, and this may be a contributing factor as to the failure to eradicate TB here. So to just give you an overall kind of idea of what the general model is um, in terms of infection dynamics between these two species, so obviously we've got intraspecific transmission going on in both species, so within social groups within badgers and also within herds, so within herd transmission. And then you also have spillover, it appears, going through either direct or indirect means, and as Paddy was talking about earlier on, we're not completely sure as to, to which is the, the major factor and the environment may be involved. So how do we deal with this system? So right now, and, and uh, for a considerable period of time, we have the annual test and cull regime that's uh, trying to, to eradicate disease within uh, the domestic host. But what do we do with wildlife? So as James kindly has explained, that we have this um, locally targeted um, badger culling regime that's been going on in earnest uh, since about 2004. And this is really um, targeted in areas where we've already had um, TB issues within cattle populations. Um, so the objectives of this study was to assess the spatial distribution of infection of badgers using these large data sets across the Republic of Ireland. We want to assess something about the, the, the temporal trends within prevalence in a broad scale, assess some intrinsic factors that might increase or decrease the probability of a badger testing positive, <coughs> and in some spatial factors. So I don't need to go into this into great detail because you already know about it, but uh, it's part of the medium-term culling strategy, um, which produces about five and a half to six and a half thousand badgers per year. The data set I was working with um, extended from 2009 through to 2012. Um, so uh, all the badgers that were captured in this in this program are sent for necropsy, and about a third of all, all of these badgers are further sent um, for further assessment um, to assess their status in terms of TB. So uh, to assess their status, about 16 lymph nodes are harvested, as well as any organs that may have evidence of um, TB infection, and bovis infection, and bite wounds. So this is an example of a picture of a bite wound on the badger there. So all samples are pooled, um, and the badgers are assigned a status according to bacteriological um, culture um, of, of the organism. Um, just a note to say that this isn't enhanced post-mortem, and therefore all the, the prevalence estimates here are apparent prevalence as opposed to true prevalence and are probably an underestimate, but still a useful metric. So just to, in terms of what did I do um, uh, quantitatively, so obviously we had a binary outcome, so we, we modelled this as a logit regression. We had repeated measures in the sense that we captured multiple badgers within sets, so we had to control for this non-independence using a generalised estimate and equation model framework. We used back, backward selection, we used um, QIC, so quasi-likelihood information criteria to, to assess different competing models, and we were interested in intrinsic and extrinsic factors. So intrinsic factors included things like like the weight of the badger, the age, gender, and the pregnancy status, the parity of females. Uh, extrinsic factors were things like the type of set in which the badger was caught, set size, and the number of badgers that were caught at that set up to that period of time. And then the temporal trend was simply um, looking at months since the start of the, the, the study period. We had spatial factors who were interested in both infection pressure coming in from local cattle but also local badger populations. So how did we measure this? So as you can see here, what we have is a, a landscape in, in a part of Ireland, and the red dot represents the location of a badger set where a badger has been removed. We associated that set with the local, the local farm, so these are the parcels of the farms. And um, what we ended up 
doing was that we associated that at different spatial scales. So the immediate farm, farm that was associated with that set, up to 250 metres, 500 metres, and 1,000 metres away from that set. So as you can see, even though we looked at, uh, with a radius of 1,000 metres around the set, this, because of farm fragmentation, we have extended this to a landscape scale metric of infection prevalence within cattle. In terms of the badgers, well, we're looking at two things. We're looking at isolation or density. So we did this by measuring the nearest neighbour um, to uh, a set, but we're also interested in infection uh, pressure coming in from other badger populations, and we measured this through the nearest neighbour distance to an infected um, set. An infected set being one where they caught a badger that was, um, had a status of embovis positive. So what did we find? So this is just a, a simple point map to show where badgers were captured and the red dots represent positive animals. So as you can see, as a broad kind of comment that you find infected animals almost everywhere we looked. Every single county that uh, produced badgers, 24 of the 26 counties produced um, some infected animals. Um, the badger level prevalence was about 11% and the set level prevalence is about 15%. We found a general kind of east-west divide in terms of risk at a county level. So we found generally higher, higher levels of infection in the, in the west of the country relative to the east of the country. And this was verified um, in our final multivariable model um, where we included the coordinates of, of the set. So we can see there. So in terms of intrinsic um, risk, we found that male badgers overall are at a higher risk of being TB positive relative to female badgers. And what was interesting was within female badgers, we found that parous animals, so this is female badgers who've had an offspring during their lifetime, um, were at a higher risk than female badgers who, who never had evidence of, um, of an offspring during their lifetime. We found a significant uh, and strongly negative temporal trend in our, in our prevalence. So over time, the national badger population over this period was decreasing in its, its relative apparent um, uh, prevalence. And this actually followed a longer temporal trend. So we had 5,000 badgers in, in our larger data set, or in, in our data set that we model with, but we also had a larger data set of 10,000 badgers that we used just for temporal modeling. And over that period of time, from 2007 through to 2013, the apparent prevalence fell from about 24, 30% down to about 9 to 11%, so a significant decline over time. We found that the neighbourhood in which a badger resided affected their probability of being TB positive. So what this means is, is that if a badger was caught at a set that was near other sets that were infected, they were more likely to be infected themselves. We also found a significant and positive um, spatial association with the, the local cattle prevalence. So effectively, the higher the local cattle prevalence at scales of one kilometre or 500 metres, the greater the probability of finding um, a test positive animal within a set. So what do these results actually mean? What can we infer from them? Well, for a start, we can say that badgers, infected badgers, have a very wide distribution across the Republic of Ireland. Um, and this possibly means that it has a long history of infection, this species, this reservoir, and probably multiple seeding of, of infection into the, into the badger population. So this supports some evidence to, to the top of our diagram there of direct or indirect transmission between the species. And this is mirrored in work that's been undertaken um, in, in Northern Ireland, where I currently work, whereby we see that we have a very wide distribution of positive badgers across the province. And then, furthermore, this data has been used to associate whole genome, um, at the whole genome level, basically, the, the strain types between M. bovis found within badgers and cattle. And um, this, this work by Bia et al. Um, suggests that there was very recent crossover events between the populations. We found an underlying spatial effect um, at a broad scale, um, so higher in the, in the west, lower in the east, and there's a number of hypotheses, hypotheses that could be uh, attributed to this pattern. So for example, other work that I've undertaken have suggested that bad, um, body mass um, of badgers, so the badger weight, is higher in the east of the country and lower in the west of the country. This could be, a, could be um, related, I suppose, to, to, the, to the quality of animal. Um, we also know that the habitats are, are far better in the east of the country, in the south of the country, than they are in, in the far, far west. And we also know that rainfall, for example, and other weather patterns has a, has a decline from east to west. So all these could be contributing factors. The, um, in terms of intrinsic risk, uh, it's already in the literature that, that male badgers tend to be on average higher risk than female badgers, but the, this um, difference between paris and non-paris females was uh, an, an interesting uh, and, and novel um, finding. Um, this could be related to, to age or aggression or movement, but it also could be the act of, of mating itself, which could, could increase risk of intraspecific um, transmission. So again, we found um, infection of both hosts 
um, um, if affected basically the probability of a badger testing positive um, for, for M. bovis. So as you can see here, we have infection pressure coming in at a landscape scale from both neighbouring badgers, but also from, from cattle. So that spatial association is there. Um, probably most important finding was after repeated culling, we found a significant and uh, of a decline in, in the probability of, of a test positive animal. And as I said, this, uh, this is following a longer trend in badger beef. Uh, BVD. So how do we explain this mechanistically? So what we know is, is that in areas where we have problems with both badgers and cattle, uh, a high, high prevalence load that we have, um, basically that's where we're targeting culling. So for example, if we knew the true prevalence, it might be up to 36% in these areas. So this is the sink population on the left. If we remove those badgers as we're doing with the culling, then it, it causes a source sink dynamic whereby badgers may migrate from source populations into this sink, uh, effectively, effectively reducing the overall prevalence there because we also know that in areas, non-hotspot areas, um, TB prevalence on average within those populations are lower. So that's our working hypothesis at the moment. So what are the conclusions? So we can say that um, over this period of time on a national scale that there's been a significant decline in, in the prevalence of TB within badgers. There's significant spatial variation at the county and then more generally um, at, the, at the kind of spatial scale of the country. There was a significant variation in badger hosts depending on both gender and parity. And then just a comment um, has already been made, like the, um, there's a, a longer term sustainable management of, of this uh, disease is probably going to incorporate um, vaccination in, in some way. And these types of data sets are very important to monitor um, wildlife. Um, and it's an exemplar, I suppose, for other problems and other diseases elsewhere. So um, this, this work, or most of this work, has already been published, so you can, you can look at it there. And I'd like to just take the opportunity to, uh, to acknowledge my co-authors on that, uh, including James O'Keefe, who's here, Simon Moore, who is here, and all the rest of co-authors. You, you can go online and have a look at the paper if you like and, and see who they are. So thank you very much for your time and patience. <laughs>
the population dynamics and the infection dynamics within the ecosystem. Okay. Thanks very much again, Andrew. No Thanks. Cheers.